Hey friends, this is Keith Nestor. I have never done a movie review before, but I just had to tell you about this movie, Nefarious. Nefarious is a movie based on a book written by a guy named Steve Dace of the Steve Dace Show on the Blaze TV network, which happens to be right now my favorite podcast. And Steve wrote a book called A Nefarious Plot, which led ultimately to this movie. Steve is a very bold man of faith, and I don't know for sure where he goes to church, but he's a Protestant guy who is joined on his podcast by a strong Catholic guy named Todd Erzin, and then their producer and also contributor is another Protestant guy named Aaron McIntyre. And they have a, a lot of incredible conversations and discussion about the faith, and it, it's just it's my favorite podcast to listen to. And plus, they're Iowa boys, so there's a lot of familiar things to me. Uh, they're based in Des Moines, which is only about two hours from where I live. Now, this review is not about the Steve Dace show, but I just wanted to mention to you that context of where this movie comes from. So Nefarious is billed as a horror movie, and it's got an R rating, which I think is a bad characterization. There are some intense scenes, no doubt, but there is literally no sexual content or profanity, and I would absolutely take a teenager to see this. Some people are like, well, I don't want to go because it looks scary. Well, my wife, Estelle, she can't handle any type of horror, and she was okay. Now, Nefarious stars Sean Patrick Flannery and Jordan Belfi and is set in a prison where a serial killer named Edward is about to be executed that evening. And a psychiatric evaluation is necessary to prove that he's sane before the execution can proceed. So the doctor named James Martin is brought in to question him and their dialogue comprises the vast majority of this film. Take a look at the trailer. Execution scheduled for 11 p.m. But he's trying to convince us he's gone insane. And therefore incapable of being executed. I need you to prove he's faking it. Edward? I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm not Edward. I'm a demon. Demons aren't really a thing. What happened to Edward? We own him. We? He's a master manipulator. You have your head so twisted around you think you're the killer, not him. Now give me something to make me believe you. Prove to me you're a demon. It's probably just a coincidence. I want to talk to the real Edward. Makes me do bad things. <laughs> can't stop him. I need you to see something. You got a fan. Did the same thing with all his victims. Help me! I'm trying to, Edward, but you have to answer my questions. You have to tell me the truth. It won't let me! It can go away. It can go away. Yes? No. It's starting to happen. Can you feel the change? I think it's time we tell you exactly what it is that we'd like you to do. So as you can see, this is pretty intense. So why am I reviewing this on my YouTube channel? What does this film have to do with Catholicism? I think a lot because it has to do with our understanding of what is truly going on in our world. This movie is about the spiritual battle that exists around us and all of the garbage that we are seeing in our culture, according to Nefarious, is the result of his demonic plan to inflict harm against Jesus. So let's talk about this, and let me warn you, if you want to avoid spoilers, turn this off right now and then come back after you see it. Otherwise, get ready for me to wreck the movie for you. Some people have referred to this movie as a Christian movie, but according to Steve Dace, that is not the best way to characterize this movie, and I appreciate the distinction. 
Because the minute that you call something a Christian anything, really, there's this unwritten set of rules you have to play by. Especially in movies, you've got to have like this cheesy dialogue. There's got to be a mandatory theologically narrated conversion scene that sounds like something out of a Promise Keeper Stadium event from 1997. And then at the end, the newsboys or casting crowns have to come out and sing a song. Now, this movie has none of those things. And Steve said that this is not a Christian movie. It is a movie made by Christians for non-Christians. Think about that. That might make zero sense to some of you, but as a content creator, it makes perfect sense to me. And I totally appreciate that. The bottom line is this is a movie that is intended to be seen by the people who need to see it most rather than an entertaining retelling of one's already existing beliefs. A lot of Christian movies are like, oh, bring your non-Christian friends to it. And then they're just like, can't relate to it at all. This movie isn't like that at all. They will totally relate to it. So understand though, if you are thinking this movie is going to be a, a retelling of your faith down to every dotted I and cross T in the catechism, then you're probably going to be looking in the wrong direction. So you may not be in for a fun night, although I will say as a Catholic, there was nothing in this film that blasphemed our faith. And in fact, there were certain elements of the film very consistent with Catholicism. Some things that were said, I went, wow, that's pretty Catholic. So you don't need to worry that there's Catholic bashing or anything like that. Now, let's talk about the things I liked about this movie. Let's start with the production. This movie is done well. It looks and sounds great. We take those things for granted sometimes, but we really shouldn't because they're difficult. The lighting and cinematography are what you would expect from a professional movie, but there's like the way that they shoot this movie and light it that, that really sets the tone and the vibe for what's going on there. It, it really draws you in. Let's talk about the acting. Now, most of us just expect great acting when we go see movies. I honestly can't remember the last time I saw a movie and I was like, man, those actors were terrible. But some roles are certainly more demanding than others. And I've heard Steve and others talk about the great job done by Sean Patrick Flannery. And I tell you what, I would agree. His performance was incredible. He's the one who plays Nefarious and Edward. Now, I do have to say, though, my all-time favorite actor is Edward Norton. And his performances in Fight Club and Primal Fear are legendary. And this role is kind of in that vibe. Now, Flannery pulls it off, no doubt, but the comparisons in my mind were a little bit tough to get around. And I'm not a professional actor, but I felt like the only parts of the film that I wish were slightly different when it came to the, to the performance was when Nefarious relents a little bit and Edward comes out. Now, I am sure that the writers and directors had reasons for how they chose to manifest Edward. So I say this with respect, but I have to be honest, I, I would have taken a little bit different approach when it came to that. Maybe make Edward less of a bumbling person who can't really communicate and more of a stoic, scared and tired man who's exhausted from his fight with evil because I kind of felt like they made it hard to get to know Edward. And I would have liked to have heard a little bit more from him and what happened in his own words about how he made the choices in his life to open himself up to evil. And like I said, this isn't a slam. I'm, I'm sure they had their reasons. And of course, you know, Sean Patrick Flannery pulled off what he was supposed to do. So maybe when I have the guts to make a movie, I'll handle things a little bit differently and some dork on YouTube can pick it apart. All right. Even with all of that and the difference of style, the acting is absolutely incredible. Now I wanna talk about my favorite thing about this movie, and that is the message. This movie is gutsy. And as Nefarious describes his plan to Dr. Martin, we get a sense of just how our world has been duped. The garbage of our culture is not the result of human enlightenment, but rather an intentional demonic plot and we have fallen for it. It kind of reminds me of what Pope Leo XIII described in his hearing the conversation between God and Satan that led to his composing the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. This movie has that kind of feel to it. Most of us have this sense. We talk about the war that we are in. We talk about the rosaries, the weapon for our times, but the enemy has his weapons too. Nefarious gives us an insight into the reasons for the hate that the demons have for us and for Jesus, whose name they cannot even say. 
One of the things I respect about Steve, Todd, and Aaron is that these men don't give a rip about what the world thinks of them or about the consequences of telling the truth boldly. And this movie does that. It'll punch you in the face with truth and it's uncomfortable. So the friends that went to see this movie with us came over after we saw it and we were discussing um, who we would want to see this movie and who we think it would offend. And sadly, we were almost to the point of thinking to ourselves, well, we shouldn't invite that person. That might offend them. But then something hit me. It was like, no, that's the point of all this. That's exactly why we are in this mess because of people like me who've been too afraid to offend. You know, I could practically hear Steve Dace yelling across Iowa at us. Look, I made this movie for them, you coward, not to entertain you. He says stuff like that on his show all the time. And he lays the blame for a lot of our problems at the feet of the church who have become so obsessed with niceness and fear of conflict that we have surrendered the fight. One of the most powerful lines in the film occurs when Nefarious is explaining his war tactics to Dr. Martin, who says, I didn't realize that we were in a war. And Nefarious immediately responds, that's why you're losing. Friends, this is our problem as the church. We don't fight like our souls and the souls of our children are at stake. We don't take up the weapons of our warfare to defend our house and church because we've already let the enemy inside. He's burning this place to the ground and we've all just stood by and let it happen. Now, society believes that all this stuff in our culture of death, the spirit of the age, as Steve refers to it on his podcast, they believe it's all progress, but Nefarious reveals that it has been meticulously planned and executed, and we've actually celebrated it. And many of us have felt this sense, and Nefarious just calls it out right to our faces. He even gloats. He's cocky and arrogant because he sees how easy it has been. And those who had the power to oppose him, like the Catholic priest who shows up but denies that demons are even real, have handed him the reins to do whatever he wants. And that should rock us, my friends. See, it's one thing to hear that in a nice sermon in a nice church. It's another thing to hear it from the mouth of the demon himself. And that's what this movie does. And as hard as that is to face, we need to face it. I need to face it. I haven't been able to shake it, my friends. And I suspect that you won't either if you go see it. But be ready to be challenged. Be ready to be convicted. And most importantly, be ready to fight. Because here's the thing, even in the movie, Nefarious knows this is a losing battle. The only thing he and his master can do is take as many souls to hell with them as possible. But those souls have a choice where Nefarious does not. And you can see that pain in the face even of a demon. Dr. James Martin makes a choice in this film as well. Nefarious offers him the world if only he would agree to tell the world his story. The movie ends after Edward is executed in an intensely brutal scene, which is probably where an argument for the R rating would seek justification. But then Dr. Martin is possessed briefly by Nefarious himself and we wonder what will become of him. The closing scene finds James Martin sitting across from Glenn Beck who runs the network that broadcasts Steve's show, by the way. And Dr. Martin has written a book, but it's not the book Nefarious wanted. It's more of a warning. Now, in this scene, of course, we avoid the cheesy conversion where the main character goes from being a staunch atheist to the new discipleship pastor at the Baptist church. But it's clear his beliefs have been expanded and there's room to consider the reality of God and demons and even the plan of salvation. But it's left unresolved and, and that's fine because life is often like that. And we get to where God wants us if and when we follow the path laid out. And oftentimes there are many zigs and zags and you get the sense this is the case for Dr. James Martin. Now I am sure that the writers of the film had conversations about the different possibilities for the film's ending with regards to Dr. Martin's choice to refuse Nefarious's offer to give him the world in exchange for his soul. But part of me wonders what it would have looked like if they'd gone a different direction. What would the message be if James had accepted the offer and achieved worldly success only to close on that eerie laugh from Nefarious who had once bragged about his ability to be patient when waiting to inhabit someone? 
His time would eventually come and the debt of his soul would need to be paid. This would have been an even darker ending to a movie that certainly won't ever end up on the Hallmark Channel, but that's also a path many people take. Perhaps watching it play out for James would also serve the purpose of warning us all not to take the bait the demons throw at us. But hey, it's not my movie to make, so who am I to judge, right? Maybe someday if I ever get to meet Steve, he can explain it to me and I'm sure I will agree that he was right. So in closing, Nefarious blew me away. I can't get it out of my head. And I'm sure that's the point. So go see this movie and be ready to fight when you walk out because Nefarious really is out there.